Yes, you. I've got eyes on you. There are certain themes show up in video games and popular media quite often. Zombies are one of these themes. There are many games that involve surviving the zombie apocalypse in some way or another. As with any theme that gets popular, you wind up having games that become must plays for anyone who likes that theme and also games that are average and largely forgettable. The game I'm looking at here is Zombie, which has this zombie theme going for it, hence the rather obvious name. Is this a must play or is this a game better left for dead? Zombie is is a first person shooter survival horror game developed by Straight Right. Zombie is a port of the Wii U game Zombie U, which was developed by Ubisoft Montpellier. This original version was released in 2012, but the port was released in 2015 for the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. The port is 1999 on all platforms and is rated M, which shouldn't really come as any surprise due to the zombie content of the game and is therefore a fitting rating for the game, in my opinion. Zombie's story isn't all that impressive. It's pretty much a bare bones zombie story, and if you're familiar with the genre, you're not going to find that much surprising here. There is kind of a weird prophecy and supernatural element to the game that is there, but it doesn't really get explained too much and mostly just seems to get used in order to give you quests later in the game to find books and letters by that person who made the prophecies in the hopes to find a cure for the zombie apocalypse. One other somewhat unique element is that it takes place in England, so it does does have some interesting style involved in some places, but I didn't find it to be quite enough to give it adequate character to make up for how generic the game felt. It's just hard to have a story when there aren't that many characters in the game. The main character you interact with, the prepper, is just not a great character in my opinion, and he basically just uses you as a gopher to get what he wants, and when you do stuff on your own, he just kind of berates you and wonders why you aren't just doing what he's telling you to do. You may think, well, what about your character? The problem with this is that you're just a randomly generated survivor that is very expendable. If you die, then you are simply replaced by another survivor, unless you're playing survival mode, and then you're just dead and it's game over. Well, this makes for some interesting systems in the game, like getting to find your previous survivor where he died or she died as a zombie that you then have to kill to recover your items that your previous character had. Even so, this system doesn't really help in terms of narrative strength. It's not necessarily a bad story, but it wasn't really a good one either. It just felt very generic and bland. Gameplay is also a bit of a mixed bag in Zombie. Part of this was because of what I was expecting. I was expecting to have a bit of a faster zombie shooter game, kind of more of an akin to Left 4 Dead or games like that. Now this is the impression you get even in the in-game video intro, to be honest, that there would be hordes of zombies and you'd be getting overwhelmed and you need to be shooting them and taking them down. But this is not what the game is like very much at all. The game is on the slow paced side. Every once in a while you'll get swarmed by a group of zombies, but this this honestly doesn't happen as often as you might think. Zombies come in mostly groups of two or three, if that. They do tend to be rather hardy and hard to kill though, and this is fine, and it feels like a good choice if you're really wanting to lean into a survival horror experience. And this survival horror element is amplified by a very clunky feeling combat system. However, with the amount of weapons you're presented with in the game, it also felt like the game wanted to lean into a more action-based kind of game as well. There were multiple types of pistols, shotguns, SMGs, and rifles, as well as a crossbow and a few different melee weapons and explosive weapons. You could also upgrade the guns of the game by finding certain parts in your travels. And this made the game feel a bit weird to have both of these kind of competing feels to the game. Felt like the game was trying to be both survival horror and a first person shooter and didn't really nail either one. And this odd mix is highlighted further by one of the main mechanics of the game called the prepper pad. This pad has a radar that can ping and tell you when there are zombies nearby. Now at the start of the game, you have to do this manually and so it takes a little bit more work, but later on you find an upgrade for your pad and it will do this automatically, kind of keeping you updated if there's anything around you. Now this system is useful for an action style of gameplay, but it takes away a little bit from the survival horror point of view. Now the game does still try to deliver some surprise attacks from zombies here, but these wind up feeling a bit ridiculous, like zombies are like dropping down from like some high ledge or the ceiling or just kind of appearing sometimes out of nowhere. Like maybe this walled off door people are 
were crawling over things to come out or they just kind of show up behind you because of something you just did. And this mechanic just added to that sense that the game didn't know exactly what it wanted to be. Well, the game does feel like it lacks direction due to these conflicting elements. It wasn't like I hated the game. It just made it feel like it lacked a clear identity. However, there were some aspects of the game that I just did not like. The first was a poor sense of exploration. Now, oftentimes games will reward exploration with items, especially exploration that involves solving a puzzle or opening a locked door. Now, there were just so many things that you could search in this game that were empty and even coded doors that you opened and were a little bit more involved to figure out, you would find next to nothing behind these doors sometimes. It was just really kind of frustrating and felt like you were wasting your time looking through a bunch of things and it was kind of an odd choice for a game like this. You can look through the prepper pad and figure out whether things have items or not, but again, it, it just makes for a weird choice and kind of a weird feel for the game. The second was one type of zombie, the exploding zombie. These zombies are strapped with explosives and and I have no clue why this is. Their existence makes absolutely no sense to me. They aren't some kind of biological alteration to the zombie like the spitting zombies in game or the exploders of the aforementioned Left 4 Dead. They're just zombies with bombs strapped to them and they just tend to be used as a way for cheap deaths, which was super annoying, like opening up a random door and oh, hey, here's an explosive zombie. And if you shoot them and blow them up, you're also dead. Like that's just not fun in my opinion. Lastly, there is also a good amount of backtracking in the game. Now, I don't always dislike backtracking if handled well, but the backtracking here just felt like padding. Even in relation to the story, the backtracking just felt like a sidetrack before getting to the end of the game, rather than this smooth step in the process. It felt like, okay, I'm all ready to go to the end, see how this thing ends, and it was like, oh no, I've gotta go and collect these random letters to get to that final part of the story. Thankfully, the game does also have a series of fast travel locations that you unlock by opening up manhole covers. That does make backtracking a little easier, but it still felt kind of awkward. This is especially because some of these fast travel locations are ridiculously out of the way from the main parts of the level. Even worse, some of these paths to them can look so similar, like they just basically cut and pasted the layout and design of all of them. And so it just can be very kind of confusing to get to the manhole covers from the path. One last thing to mention here is that the menus in your prepper pad can can be a bit awkward to use. The game was originally designed to use the Wii U controller, which was like a mini tablet, but since this port doesn't have that kind of control available, that makes the menu suffer a bit. The game also lacks a good map system. I would have really liked to have a more detailed map of the area you were in instead of only being able to see the mini map in the corner. That's not that big of a deal, but I had more issues just trying to navigate the menu in general due to kind of the clunkiness of it all. Now, overall, the gameplay like the story was just not super impressive for me. It's not bad, but it wasn't really good either. Zombie's art style leans heavily in the drab, gloomy, apocalyptic, garbage-strewn direction. It's pretty much what you would expect for the genre, but doesn't have a lot of character overall. There are times where a sense of distinct style pops up, mainly in the Buckingham Palace and Tower of London areas. Even then, you spend so much time underground in rather nondescript passages that there are lots of places that look very similar and can be hard to navigate due to that sameness. The game also isn't anything spectacular to look at. While graphics are definitely not the most important part of a game for me. The graphics here are just not that impressive and it doesn't really have a strong enough art style most of the time to really compensate for that. It tries to go kind of for a more realistic look and it definitely doesn't hit that with the dated graphics. The sound is also okay. This isn't a genre that goes for super memorable music typically. It's more about creating an atmosphere and it succeeds in doing that. I can't really think of anything super memorable on the sound front, but it wasn't bad either. Some of the beeps from the radar or from mines could get a bit annoying. The mines were definitely the worst in my opinion, but there was only really one section of the game where you had to avoid a minefield. So as long as you got past that section, you were pretty much past that sound. I didn't have any major issues with zombies, like no crashes or anything like that, but I did have a couple of minor oddities. The first is that the loading screen has a skip button, which is really odd to me. Why didn't the loading screen just end when you're ready? Why do we need to skip it? It's a decision that makes no sense, especially since said loading screen isn't really that interesting. The second is that I did experience some voiceover issues at times. There are certain documents you interact with that will cause a voiceover of someone reading those documents. However, there was no real way to stop that narration without listening to it all. Even if you walk away, it would still be going and would 
would even sometimes restart if you went too far away and came back. This would also keep other in-game dialogue from happening sometimes. The main one that I noticed this in was the document beside the bed in the safe house, that if you like did that and like the prepper was gonna try to tell you something, that wouldn't always play nice together. Neither of these things were major, but they were both odd little issues that I ran into and figured it was worth mentioning. Zombie to me is pretty much the poster child for average. It has some areas where it stands out a little, but these are all underutilized or come with negatives that somewhat counterbalance those positives. The setting being in England and the supernatural elements they have hovering around the story are interesting, but again, they just weren't used nearly enough to make a compelling change to the story. I didn't hate my time with Zombie, but I don't really think it's going to be a game that I find memorable. The characters, plot, and sadly, even most of the locations are very forgettable. It's also a game that doesn't seem to know what it wants to really be. Is it a slow paced survival horror or a more action based first person shooter where you take out zombies? Tries to do a little of both here and I'm not sure it really works the best. That said, I'm giving zombie a five out of 10. As I said, this game is just average and that's what a five is to me. It's an equal mix of good and bad in my book. If you're a big fan of zombie games, then you might be interested in trying this one out if you're looking for something else in that category to play. But even so, there are far better zombie games that you can play and enjoy. Joy. Zombie is sadly just kind of a bland and forgettable game. I haven't had a bad time playing it, but I can't really say that it's a game I would really recommend anyone to actively seek out either. So don't worry, you're not going mad. <laughs> uh, well, um, do come and find me in the lab, won't you? <laughs>